And uh, if we look at the economy, if we look at the society with uh, these, uh, in this perspective, we realize there are players that are very important and that sometimes are not even considered by the economic analysis. Uh, many, in, in, on many occasions, uh, markets are just uh, described as a, a population of companies uh, uh, fighting uh, or competing against each other. Why, for example, there is the role of governments, the role of the public sector. And also during the crisis, we realized how many times uh, the role of public money, of public entities, could uh, cope with problems created by the other players. Uh, let's think about the, the money that has been, that has been put by uh, governments uh, to uh, avoid the, the, the meltdown of, of the financial markets at a certain point. Let's uh, uh, remember uh, the money and the actions uh, that uh, the, the public, uh, uh, public entities uh, have a rightly put uh, in uh, uh, saving uh, uh, a number of entities, uh, in avoiding the bankruptcies of a number of systemic uh, 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 players. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying at all that uh, private initiative is not crucial. Private initiative is in a number of, of countries and in most part of the world uh, the, the, the most uh, strong propeller of growth, but we have to be able to use, uh, also in countries that were not used to uh, uh, use the public hands, uh, uh, governments in the right way. Uh, market values. Market values have to remain uh, important, have to be defended. Uh, market economy in, uh, uh, in our economies have has to be uh, even uh, diffused and uh, uh, cover even larger areas of the, uh, of, of the economy. But we must remember that there are a number of activities, a number of, uh, uh, of, of people in the society that do not respond to market values. The so-called economy of gift, the so-called uh, the, the activity of, that is done within the families, uh, that is uh, performed by non-profit organizations, uh, that are uh, performed by uh, uh, social companies or social entrepreneurs, uh, by foundations. Uh, the kind of the, the, the very large uh, amount of services that are not provided by market-oriented entities that are not evaluated in terms of money, that are not uh, uh, produced and, uh, and, uh, and supplied uh, because of uh, profit objectives, are in many countries a very important part of the society. That does not take anything out of, uh, of, of the market. The market is and will remain uh, the, the, the pillar, but we have to be able to use, to expand, especially in our country, the, the, the role of the so-called third sector, the, the, the sector that is made of foundations, social companies, uh, uh, volunteering, uh, uh, and this kind of activities is massive. And a good part of the welfare uh, system services are now being provided by this kind of entities. Uh, they are becoming so important that our bank has created a specialized bank totally devoted uh, to non-profit organizations and we are already working with 50,000 of them only uh, uh, in our country. So uh, if we believe also in social cohesion, and then we'll come back to that, uh, we have to be able to use markets where market is the right instrument, but we have to be able to use also other instruments, other levers to keep together uh, the society. Uh, if all these things are true, probably the way we measure growth uh, is insufficient. We tend to measure the growth performance of our countries only in terms of GDP. GDP is a very important measure, but is 
a limited measure does not take into account a number uh, of uh, very important uh, factors. For example, it ignores totally whatever is not produced and sold on the market. And as we said before, there are enormous amounts of activities that are not sold on the market but are performed and supplied to the society. Uh, the GDP does not take into account the quality of what uh, we sell, but simply the value and the price at which it is sold. Uh, GDP uh, is not good at evaluating the real value of some of the services provided by government, healthcare system, education, these kind of things. And these are very important things in many countries of the world. The GDP does not uh, uh, measure and include uh, the value of social capital or the quality of life. So I'm not saying that we should ignore because GDP is very important and that we have to take that into very much account. But we have to find a way to complement GDP measures with other kind of measures to complete the picture of the real stage of development of a country. And I'm referring to uh, the, the, the quality and the access to health care, to education, to the quality of the public authority uh, services, uh, the way, for example, uh, wealth is distributed. That's a very, another very important point in the way uh, uh, countries and societies are managed. Uh, GDP, for example, does not take into account uh, if a certain level of growth is based on debt or is based on capital. So it doesn't matter what's the, what's the platform on which you, you, you will grow, but as we know, it makes a lot of difference if your growth is based on debt or is based on, on capital. Um, GDP does not take into consideration the sustainability from a financial point of view, from an environmental point of view, from a social point of view of the growth it creates. Obviously, it is very difficult to find a new measure to uh, evaluate the real development phase or development stage of the country. And uh, I would strongly suggest to keep GDP uh, a, 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 as a component of, the, of this evaluation, but progressively we have to add other elements. The first one I would add is an indicator on the job creation capability of a system. The number of new jobs. Let's, let's discuss about what kind of job creation parameter. But if we add to GDP the amount of job creation that was created in a certain period in a certain country, and this figure can be uh, compared at the global level, we would make quite a quantum leap in the right direction because uh, uh, beyond the, the job creation figure there are a number of other variables that are very very important uh, for the way a society works. And this is the second chapter, the second lesson, the uh, economic beliefs. We saw the rules first, then uh, the lessons about the economic uh, beliefs. The third lesson I was mentioning before has to do with international cooperation and is certainly a positive lesson we got from the crisis. When the crisis was at the peak, the world, probably for the first time uh, in such an effective way, decided to get together. The G20 was created. G20 was, uh, uh, was uh, quite a good invention by uh, the global leaders uh, uh, of the world and it proved to be uh, very effective. The reaction was rapid, the money made available was immense and we could cope with the, with the, with the risk of the melting down in the financial world and uh, uh, we avoided uh, uh, the recession that was taking place to become a depression. So in that respect, uh, this example of international cooperation uh, uh, was very effective. We are now in a world that is more and more multipolar. 
We are not anymore a, a, a world with one pillar and all the others around this pillar. We are now a much more complex episode and a much more uh, complex. We have more than one pole. We have uh, many different cultures uh, working together. And uh, we have uh, power and wealth moving from the west uh, to the east. We have a number of challenges that make global governments much more difficult than in the past, but at the same time, much more constructive. And uh, uh, in this new uh, situation, all the big leading countries have to play, to play a very responsible way. China is a, a protagonist in, in, in this new world, and the role it has played uh, during the crisis has been pivotal. And the kind of responsibilities that will, uh, will be put on the shoulders of your country will be uh, greater and greater uh, in, the, in the next years. Uh, a region of the world that is not gaining in terms of uh, role in the global governance is certainly Europe. Uh, Europe uh, has not uh, uh, proven itself yet strong enough in terms of institutions when the crisis uh, blew up. Certainly, we have to work much more than what we have done in the past in terms of integration, in terms of coordination. And for sure, uh, we will be able to play the role that we could play thanks to our economic strength, also in the political world, only when Europe will be able to talk to the external world with one voice and not with 27 words. So, back to growth. We need more growth at the global level and we have, uh, we have to uh, help those regions of the world like Europe that, and to a certain extent like the United States that are not growing enough to take a new pace in terms of growth. That's the only way to create prosperity, to fight poverty and to create and to ensure peace in the long term. So we have to ask ourselves what is sustainable growth? And then we will see, and that will be the, the last part of, the, of, of, of my speech, how to foster sustainable growth. But let's first say what we mean by sustainable growth. Uh, in many cases, uh, even long period of growth in the past proved to be based on non-sustainable routes. And uh, uh, after uh, ex expanding periods, we had uh, very, very bad uh, uh, recessionary ones afterwards. We need uh, to be very creative in terms of intelligence and in terms of leadership uh, to make the new phase of growth more sustainable and more strong. 